service administration, agriculture and infrastructure, and also the monitoring and evaluation. The meeting which today we are uh, hosting the uh, Public Service uh, Commission uh, under the stewardship of uh, Professor Bikeni uh, uh, to present to us the, the, uh, the annual report of the uh, Public Service Commission. And uh, without any waste of time, indeed, you are all welcome. Uh, any apologies that you want to register, uh, Public Secretary? Thank you, Chairperson. Yes, uh, the only apology that we have received is for Honorable Dango. Uh, he will join us uh, later. He's got the, the, some, the, they are working in the, his house, uh, the park. So he will join us later. Oh, brilliant. I think that, uh, that is noted. Uh, we'll then, uh, uh, without any uh, waste of time, then. Uh, uh, also welcome the, the media team uh, from Parliament and also uh, uh, public at large and uh, indicate to them that the, the, uh, the work that, uh, that, the, that the Public Service Commission is doing is quite important in terms of uh, uh, its key problematic areas and uh, will be then uh, be able to learn a lot uh, from the from the team uh, led by Professor Vigeni. Over to you, Professor Vigeni. Uh, thank you very much, honorable chairperson and honorable members uh, of the select committee. We really appreciate the opportunity to come and account and present our annual report. I'll just make some opening remarks, after which I will ask our team, because I'm here with fellow commissioners. I'm here also with the secretariat. In other words, uh, the CFO, the DDGs are here to support us. The DG has apologized because she's in another meeting with the UNDP and several departments. I have had to leave that meeting and make sure that I'm here. In terms of our annual report, I just want to say that uh, the key things that we want to present or which are reflected in this annual report are our key achievements, which we met all of them and where we missed one target. It's not anything more than the self-imposed uh, target of payment within 14 days of any of our service providers when in fact the legislation says it should be 30 days. But we felt that we should lead by example, but the explanation as to why that happened in the midst of COVID and the unit that was affected by COVID is provided in the report itself. And what is most important besides all those other things is the fact that PSC is on the verge of filling all the vacant posts nationally. We do have all but one commissioner and I did have an interaction and correspondence with the chair of the portfolio committee who has promised that they will conclude that process before the end of the financial year and also provincially Mpumalanga we have had to go and have a meeting with the speaker in Pumalanga to ensure that vacancy there is closed in Gauteng they've done interviews we may be joined by the newly appointed uh, commissioner there. So going forward, I do think that we will have the full complement of the commission itself. Perhaps more important is the fact that PSC has been very much central in driving a process of professionalization, working with the coordinating entity, which is the National School of Government, 
only a few days ago that the cabinet approved this framework for professionalization of public service. And we do think that this will go a long way in advancing and fulfilling the core mandate of the PSC, which is ensuring that we have effective and efficient public service, which also adhered to the principles and values of the constitution itself. So that in itself, we amplify that here, but since the report was concluded, we have had these major developments, which is a milestone and probably a game changer. By the time we meet next time, we will be talking about how the implementation across all the spheres of government, national, provincial, and local, and across all the three branches of government, executive, legislative, as well as the judiciary, so that that building of the state capacity is at the heart of many things that we are doing. PSC itself is undergoing repositioning of itself and even review of its own, uh, you know, uh, targets so that we have a greater impact. We are reviewing even some of the approaches. But for now, I will then invite our DDG. Uh, is it uh, DDG Malazi or DDG uh, Dr. Sidibe who is presenting the next segment of the annual report? And then our CFO will immediately go straight into the financials. Thank you very much, Honorable Chairperson. Yeah. yeah. Uh, good morning, uh, Honorable Chairperson of the Select Committee on Transport, Public Service and Administration, Public Works and Infrastructure, members of the Select Committee, Chairperson of the Public Service Commission, and uh, all protocol observed and officials uh, who are present. I will present the PSC's annual report for the 2021-2022 on behalf of our Director General. Uh, briefly, we will also provide uh, the committee with um, the reflections on our key uh, achievements, a summary of performance across the various branches that constitute the PSC, as well as uh, the financial performance and audit outcome. I will be assisted uh, by uh, our Chief Financial Officer, Mr. Momeka. My apology, DDG, if you can just show your face for five minutes because uh, this is streaming. Okay. Uh, where's the video? Is it coming? Mm -hmm. I don't to get start video. Uh, there you are, you can continue. Ah, thank you, thank you very much. Uh, technology challenged, I'm using someone's computer. Uh, can I proceed with the presentation, Honorable Chair? Yes, you can proceed. Thank you very much, sir. Right, um, in terms of uh, our budget, the PSC for the financial year under review, we had a budget of approximately 286 million. And uh, this funds our entire operations at the national office and the nine provincial offices. Uh, from a perspective of commissioners, whilst uh, we have uh, 14 commissioners in terms of the uh, Public Service Commission Act, uh, the chairperson of the PSC has already indicated that some of these positions are vacant. And in terms of the audit outcome, which Mr. Momeka will give us a full breakdown on, uh, we have uh, received a clean audit uh, third year in a row. And overall, we have achieved 96% on 
of our audited performance targets, uh, which is 22 out of the 23 targets. I will explain how those targets uh, are calculated later on. My slide is not moving. Uh, apologies, uh, my computer has just uh, frozen. Thank you. Um, the reflections in terms of our achievements are as follows. Uh, one of the things that we have done as the PSC is to issue a circular on unlawful instructions to executive authorities and heads of departments. Uh, but this was not just meant for this level of leadership. Uh, they were also requested in the circular to share the contents of the circular with um, employees um, in their departments. We have also played a very key role as an institution in the development of the national implementation framework on the professionalization of the public service. Uh, I'm sure a lot of the developments in this regard have been noted as they are wildly reported uh, in the media and uh, the chairperson has also alluded to that. We have facilitated the performance evaluation of several heads of departments, those who are qualifying, uh, both uh, the DG in the presidency and some HODs in the premier's offices. This is in line with uh, the role and the mandate of the PSC in terms of the HOD uh, uh, evaluation uh, PMDS uh, framework. We have issued uh, a number of articles on topical issues, uh, some relating to COVID-19 in the areas of education or its impact and how to navigate it, human resource management, as well as uh, labor relations uh, prescripts and practices. We have also intervened and engaged with various departments to ensure that suppliers are paid within uh, 30 days. And this is a function that we continue uh, to perform on an ongoing basis. We have also conducted a very successful webinar on the effectiveness, efficiency, and value for money um, in um, the area of uh, procurement. The PSC has also intervened on behalf of citizens to facilitate access to services during uh, the COVID lockdown. Uh, whilst we know that the 2021-2022 period, we were going through a less uh, a stringent uh, lockdown uh, 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 levels, uh, we do note that uh, economic activities were still very much restricted and a lot of people did lose their jobs. It was important for the organization to make sure that those who are supposed to receive the 350 grant, uh, a grant uh, receive and to also ensure that water is made available to affected communities, especially around the KZN area. We've also participated in various events with a, a number of strategic partners, amongst those including uh, the South African, um, sorry, if I can uh, uh, rephrase that, we have participated in a number of engagements with uh, strategic partners for South Africa, amongst those including the European Union Strategic Partnership Dialogue, the University of South Africa and the UNDP uh, uh, office, as well as the National School of Government. We've also continued to publish what we refer to as the pulse of the public service, which is a brief um, quarterly news bulletin from the PSC that allows us to report on the work that we do, as well as to comment on other contemporary issues. We've also conducted qualitative evaluations of departments on how they comply with the constitutional values and principles. And this has culminated in the publication of uh, our annual report called the State of the Public Service Report or SOPS. And we've also conducted inspections in the education facilities in all the eight provinces. We've also done inspections in other areas looking at um, uh, issues of uh, social distancing uh, and uh, 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 health and safety, especially in the schooling sector. Uh, that was uh, during COVID. We will also 
uh, later on address uh, some of the inspections and citizens' engagements that we have conducted as an organization. And overall, as I indicated earlier, that our performance uh, was overall 96%. Uh, uh, the 96% was arrived at as follows. Uh, the stats are very clear. The point that I just want to indicate to the committee here is standalone output. They are constituted by a range of outputs, some of them extremely complex, some of them not too complex, but too many. And when you deliver on all of those, then uh, the report is that you have delivered on a particular output. If you have 50 outputs to deliver for to make up one indicator, you miss one. You have basically missed an entire target indicator. So it's important that when our performance is assessed, we have this understanding in mind that these targets are basically a consolidation of a lot of deliverables uh, uh, in all the areas. So the only area where we have not achieved the target, like uh, the chairperson said, was in program one administration. Um, but this one, in terms of the set rules, we have achieved it, but in terms of us setting a very high requirement for ourselves as the organization, we have missed it. And hence it was agreed with the Auditor General that we will be assessed on the basis of uh, our commitment to paying suppliers within seven to 14 days. Uh, whilst we might have missed it, to the best of my knowledge, we have still been able to pay most suppliers uh, within a period of uh, 14 to 20 days. Then the briefly program performance in terms of the various programs, uh, uh, I think uh, in the interest of time, maybe I should not take the committee through each and every one uh, of the deliverable. But in this slide, let me highlight exactly the key uh, indicator that we have reported on that we did uh, miss uh, our payment of suppliers within seven to 14 days. Uh, 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 the, 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 the committee will note that we paid 88% of our suppliers within uh, seven to 14 days. In terms of the reports that we have received from the AG is that uh, we have performed exceptionally well because the 12% that we did not pay within seven to 14 days we still managed to pay it uh, within an average of about 20 days, uh, uh, um, 20, 25 days. So that is uh, the only uh, uh, one there. Uh, yo, can I move because this, it's blocking? Um, and then I will uh, proceed and say uh, this particular uh, 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 slide is merely indicating exactly what I have referred to. And then I will proceed to program two, which is leadership and management practices. Uh, the committee will note that we have achieved most of uh, our targets or all of our targets. In two of those targets, we did exceed uh, the set targets, uh, which I must place in context that our targets were reduced a bit during COVID. Uh, our normal targets are in the region of 80 to 85%. But during COVID, they were reduced a little bit uh, to 65% and 70 And that is the reason why uh, we exceeded the targets. However, in the financial year 2022-2023, we have increased the targets back to 85% in this area. In program three, monitoring and evaluation, we have delivered on all our set targets again. Uh, the committee will note if we look at uh, number one, number of approved state of the public service reports, it is one report, but this report is the culmination of a lot of work by the PSC, work that includes research, uh, the promotion of constitutional values and principles, inspections, citizens forum, it's a lot of work. It's a consolidation of a lot of the work that we do uh, in an annual basis. And the, uh, the number of evaluation reports on the impact 
uh, uh, of changed practices. Again, these reports are produced after we have done evaluations in a number of departments and we consolidate those outcomes into few reports just for illustration purposes. So we have done all of those. And another one of our items, that is a consolidation of the work of the PSC, especially around the recommendations that we issue and the extent of implementation is the last item on the section 194E report. It's a requirement uh, in terms of uh, the constitution that we, we submit that report. And uh, you can see uh, members that uh, on the promotion of the constitutional values and principles, we have done 21 engagements. These are engagements that are attended by lots of people in some areas. We are talking about hundreds where we are targeting employees at different levels of operation in departments nationally and in the provinces. And we continue uh, uh, to do this work. We promote the CVPs, not just through the promotional workshops, but also in all the work that we do, that when we make findings, we also uh, pronounce on whether the findings that we are making and the recommendations comply with the constitutional values and principles. Uh, the last program for integrity and anti-corruption, again, in this program, we have achieved all of our set targets in two areas. We have uh, exceeded the targets. I think the same explanation that I gave before that says we reduced our targets during COVID, uh, which is why it might look like we overly exceeded the targets, the same reasoning apply. But for 2023, 2024, we have increased our targets back to normality uh, pre the COVID-19 uh, uh, um, 2020 period. Uh, but just to indicate in terms of uh, target number one, which is the public administration investigations, uh, the range of investigations that the PSC conducts in this area, um, they vary. Some of them are fairly straightforward and manageable. Some are extremely complex and they include uh, multiple areas that require the organization to establish interdisciplinary teams to be able to deal with those investigations. So that is in the nature of the complexity and all of those will culminate into one target. Again, the financial disclosure uh, framework, the report that we produce, we produce this report after consolidating information uh, 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 that we gather from departments and also looking at the reports from the AG. So it is an extensive process that results in us being able to produce this report and also to track what has happened with the outcome of some of the disciplinary processes where uh, 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 challenges pertaining to uh, the improper use of finances are noted. Uh, this last slide, again, it's uh, 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 just giving uh, 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 an overview. The report that we have done around um, research on professional ethics, uh, specifically in this study, we were looking at the extent of compliance by departments in uh, the promotion of ethics through the establishment of the required ethics infrastructure in terms of uh, uh, the ethics framework that is applicable in the public service. Again, uh, all of this uh, uh, were concluded. And um, our performance in terms of the past um, three years, it's standing as follows, 2019, 2020, before COVID, we had 100%. 2020, 2021, our performance dropped to 93%. And then 2021, 2022, we have improved uh, to 96%. Uh, uh, so I think uh, it is at this stage that I would like to request uh, the CFO to take the committee through the financial report. Mr. Momeka. Let me take this opportunity to thank the chairperson of uh, the Select Committee on Transport, Public Service and Administration, and Public Works and Infrastructure, uh, Honorable Muimang, 
uh, and I greet the honorable members of the committee. I'm trying to, to position my camera so that you can clearly see my face. Um, it's a bit dark here. Um, and let me also greet the honorable members. Let me greet the honorable members of the select committee, uh, chairperson of the Public Service Commission. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I greet you. I will take you through the, 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 the slides on finance. I thought my colleagues were going to project, but I'm disabled. Can you just project the slides again, please? I think you can switch off the, the camera uh, for, for Dr. Sidney. Yes, uh, if we can go to the slide, yeah, the next slide. Thank you. Uh, if you could offer it for me, the next slide. Uh, and then the next one. <clears throat> I won't be long. I apologize for that technical glitch. From the budget of, uh, from the actual expenditure of uh, 265.7 uh, million uh, that we have spent during the two. 2021-2022 financial year, 77% um, of that which was spent is um, compensation of employees and 21% is on goods and services, which is basically our operational cost. I just wish to indicate that uh, uh, the majority of our expenditures are, are, are based on operational costs. Um, uh, on, 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 on compensation of employees because we are a, an institution that uh, has got, uh, um, we, 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 we do our work uh, performed by our um, uh, employees who conduct the investigations, the research and so on. Um, therefore, that, that is more of our ratio, spending ratio, um, 77 to, to basically uh, 23%. The next slide, please. Um, these are the audited financial statements um, uh, that we are presenting before your good selves. Uh, just to indicate that from the budget of 286 million that was allocated to, to the department, we were able to spend 265 million, um, uh, and which translates to 93% of the budget and we underspent around about 7%. Therefore, we unfortunately had to surrender 20.5 million uh, back to treasury. And, 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 and the variance analysis is, is provided, the variances is provided on the, on the extreme right, where it basically shows that in administration, we spend the larger portion of, we underspend the larger portion uh, followed by uh, program for which is IAC. Going to the next slide. So this is a vertical presentation of just what I've shown you. Um, the same budget, the totals are the same, but just to indicate that uh, the majority of our underspending, underspending uh, is, is, is basically on, on, on compensation. The larger portion of which, which is um, the vacancies that we had uh, for commissioners during the financial year which are beyond our control to fill, that 11.8 million. Um, so, so that's a larger, larger portion of it. I must also indicate that, yes, um, we also experienced some uh, vacancies uh, due to natural attrition for staff, but the larger portion is really attributed to, to commissioners, which are matters that are in the hands of parliament, uh, as well as provincial legislatures and the premiers, as well as the presidency. Goods and services, um, the underspending, it's mainly a saving, not really an underspending. During that financial year, we were operating from, uh, largely from office and also to a certain extent from home. So we did make a huge saving when it comes to um, monies that were uh, supposed to, to have been spent when we were in office, but we were operating from home. We've got uh, uh, 10 regional offices, nine provincial, and also one uh, 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 parliamentary office. And, 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 and also we saved in those offices on, 
your utility bills as well as other office related administration costs so we, we regard that mainly as a saving On, also because we were, it was during that time where there was covid and we, we were not traveling a lot a lot of meetings were held uh, on a platform like this as we continue to do. But uh, we did not really have a lot of interactions out there with the communities just to make sure that we do not spread uh, COVID. So there was less traveling. And hence, I regard that more as saving rather than underspending. Um, then I will go to the next slide just to indicate that um, it is with a really good, uh, it, it is with pleasure to inform the August committee that uh, we have uh, obtained a, sub, a, a third clean audit. Our first clean audit was in 2019-2020. We sustained it in 2020-21, and yet again, we sustained it in 21-22. And, and for us, it, it is important because PSC is an institution that prides itself by being custodians of good governance. And part of, part of good governance is clean administration. And therefore we've got a moral high ground to occupy. We cannot be going around investigating institutions that do not comply, whereas we ourselves do not comply. Therefore, we do not see this clean audit and sustaining it over the years as, as, as just a support function. We see it as part of the core business of, 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 of PSC. Um, I, I, I think we've indicated uh, what, what it means. Uh, uh, so we've given you a six year history. The next slide will basically unpack a bit what is that that we have on that, and on that uh, the, the clean audit. Maybe the select committee, uh, if they can note that uh, we pride ourselves with paying suppliers within a period of nine days for 2021, 2022 uh, financial year. We know that South Africa has got a lot of small businesses that are doing business with institutions, even big businesses. And it is not fair for these businesses to go under because government doesn't pay fast. So we have put systems in our organization to make sure that we really pay suppliers quite fast. But you can see that the 17 days that we, we had the previous uh, financial year was as a result of COVID because we, there was a lockdown of three months where we did not come to work. And that really didn't do good to our good uh, uh, rate of paying within, but we went back to below 10 days and we will continue to hover around uh, during that uh, those 10 days. Just to also indicate that, although we may have appeared to have underperformed on one indicator, which is payment of uh, 13 days between 14 and seven days. We were too ambitious because in 2019, 2020, we paid within 13 days, seven days. Therefore, we decided to put a very tough uh, target for us, which um, proved to be a bit of a nightmare during the COVID years. But we still continued to pay all invoices within 30 days, even though only 12% were paid beyond um, the seven to 14 days. Um, the next slide, uh, it's the same graph that shows basically the history of payments. And the next slide uh, is just to conclude to unpack the audit report to say to you, uh, honor honorable uh, members of select committee, to say that uh, um, the fact that uh, we did not, uh, we, did, we achieved a thin audit tells us that we did not have uh, uh, audit findings and material errors in our uh, performance report as well as annual financial statements. It shows that the system of internal control that we have put in place and we continue to maintain is robust. And I wish to indicate that during the year under review, there were no transactional uh, uh, expenses that are not desired, irregular, fruitless, and wasteful, and unauthorized. The only uh, uh, unauthorized uh, irregular expenditure that we had was in CAD in 2018-2019, and it was for a three-year contract where we did not procure the services through CETA, even though the, the, the procurement itself was clean. We did not procure, uh, we were migrating our telephone services, and it was going to take longer for CETA to do that service for us. And the anti-corruption hotline was definitely going to be going down as a result of uh, not being serviced. So a decision was taken rather 
continue with the service. So we, we procured, went on an open tender and we procured clean. Our only sin was that we did not do with uh, through CIDA. We know that there are challenges with CIDA. CIDA is quite inefficient. And uh, we have requested uh, a permission from the minister who is responsible for CIDA, Minister of Digital Communication, to allow a PSC to procure, uh, not following the CIDA uh, 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 processes. We, we are awaiting uh, outcomes as a result. Just to also indicate that uh, our financial health is, is, is quite impressive. Uh, we are very viable. So when uh, AG did their financial viability, they gave us a green. Um, there were no cases of employees who were found to have conducted businesses, business with the state. Uh, we know that there are serious challenges with issues of corruption. And uh, we always uh, judge ourselves by the best standards. And it, it is important for us to reflect on matters like that. Um, we know that uh, somewhere else there are challenges with matters of PEE procurement and other procurement uh, uh, issues. We remain clean as the system of internal control that has been put in place continues to, to show that uh, it is working. And uh, I have indicated that uh, we have improved on our days to pay our creditors. We are hopeful that we'll continue to, pro, to, 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 to improve. I will hand over to the chairperson of the Public Service Commission. Thank you. Well, thank you very much, uh, CFO. I think uh, we will hand it over back to the Honorable Chairperson so that we can entertain or respond to questions okay. as and thank when Thank you. Uh, the Dr. Silva, let me... Uh, if, yeah, thank you. Uh, thank you, thank you. Uh, were you done, uh, Chair? Uh, yes, I'm done to say I'm, uh, we are now presenting ourselves for questions so that we can reflect on what is in our annual report. Thank you. Thank you, Chairperson of the Public Service Commission. Honorable uh, members, that's the, that's the, uh, the totality of presentation made to us, performance, uh, and also the, the audited uh, uh, finances. I will now open the floor for engagement uh, from uh, honorable members uh, to engage with the presentation. Members, my my audible. Uh, I've noticed uh, honorable Kai. Uh, floor is yours. Uh, good morning, uh, uh, honorable chair, uh, honorable members, uh, Professor Figeni and uh, uh, his team. Um, Thank you very much, uh, uh, Honorable Chair. And thanks uh, to uh, Professor Fugain for the uh, presentation of the annual uh, report of uh, PSC. Uh, let, let me indicate up front, uh, Chair, and also to Professor Fugain, we, uh, we, we have always not been sure as to whether uh, PSC accounts uh, to the select committee. We had to seek uh, legal advice uh, in that respect and were uh, 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 given a green light that uh, uh, PSC also should uh, report uh, or account uh, uh, to the select committee. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm raising that point because we may not uh, uh, necessarily, uh, speaking for myself, I may not necessarily uh, no exactly uh, whether I, I won't be conflicting uh, the mandate uh, of the PSC with regard to the questions that I will be uh, uh, posing. Uh, I'm, I'm actually very happy with the with the report, um, uh, as the, the CFO is also indicating that uh, uh, with regard to good governance, uh, the 
institution. Uh, should uh, set an example. Um, we agree with, with that statement. Um, my question will, will not necessarily be mainly on the on the report, uh, but they will be mainly on the impact uh, that uh, PSC is is uh, making with regard to a uh, public service uh, in general. Um, one that uh, the that let's take for example the outcomes of uh, the commission uh, that was focusing on the uh, state capture. Um, to, to 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 what extent then is uh, the PSC uh, going to ensure? that uh, going forward some of the things that are reported that uh, arise from the the public service identified by uh, the commission uh, uh, won't happen uh, i'm not saying they won't have been 100 percent but perhaps uh, eliminated or uh, a reduction with regard to those uh, uh, things that have been identified um also uh, uh, the 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 I wanted to also check from time to time the Auditor General, uh, the Office of Auditor General will pick up some of the issues that relate to uh, issues of uh, uh, lack of bad uh, 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 governance uh, with regard to uh, uh, departments, whether at the national or provincial level. I just wanted to check if uh, um, the commission, I mean, the PSC uh, does uh, uh, that uh, uh, highlight some of the challenges of uh, good governance uh, in departments. And, and uh, if it does so, what does it do with regard to those? Uh, uh, because I, when I look at uh, some of the uh, Auditor General's report, uh, there are some challenges uh, that has to do with the uh, 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 issues, the uh, challenges of uh, uh, good governance, especially around issues of a uh, 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 procurement. Uh, as I indicated, it may not necessarily be part of the mandate, but uh, 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 I just wanted to, to so you'll pardon me if I'm raising issues that are not necessarily uh, in, in, in your uh, space. Um, uh, there was also a report that uh, I mean, during, I mean, in the presentation uh, that you assisted uh, with regard to visiting schools to ensure issues of uh, social distances, uh, you know, around the issues of uh, COVID-19. Um, what I was interested also in, uh, in terms of it, your money, whether it also extend to also looking at uh, issues of service delivery, uh, in schools, uh, challenges of infrastructure, uh, challenges of um, uh, where there are no uh, learner teacher support materials, uh, such as textbook. And, uh, you know, there was those challenges in some of the problems, particularly uh, the Eastern Cape. Uh, I know of the Eastern Cape. I'm not sure about other provinces. So I wanted to check if uh, your, your mandate would extend, I mean, extend to to investigate uh, the, uh, those challenges uh, where the challenges of infrastructure, but you find that uh, millions uh, are returned to treasury because they have not been used, uh, you know, where, uh, so my question therefore would be whether your mandate also extend into investigating uh, such things, because for me, they've got to do with the challenges of uh, 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 good, uh, good governance. Um, let, let me then go back to the issues and some of the that are uh, in the report. Um, the, the challenge uh, that uh, is raised with regard to the offices not uh, being saved. Um, next week, uh, um, I see that uh, is the indication that my uh, network is uh, unstable. Uh, so maybe I should just uh, switch off the camera. Yes, yes. 
the next week we'll be meeting with the table there their their annual uh, report so uh, we wanted to be clear uh, specific so that we can take that opportunity to raise uh, the specific issues that uh, uh, PSC may uh, uh, raise with us uh, to assist uh, uh, to to take up those issues uh, with regard to offices not being a, a conducive um, uh, uh, with regard to uh, occupational health and safety. The other issue I wanted to check uh, is to whether as part of their mandate, uh, the PSC has a, a, a role to play with regard to issues of a lifestyle audit uh, uh, in, in the public service uh, in, 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 in particular. Um, yeah, there, there's also the mention of uh, the, the whistleblowers. There has been complaints that uh, whistleblowers are, are not protected uh, uh, this uh, issue of uh, the the health department, I think, in her, um, if I'm not mistaken, she was a, a CFO. Uh, she was a whistleblower. Uh, so, what does the the institution? Uh, do in terms of addressing such challenges uh, that has to do with the, the protection of uh, uh, whistleblowers. I will uh, check. Uh, uh, it looks like the uh, the network connectivity is indeed impacting uh, on your ability to finally drive your point home, Honorable Rai. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll go back to you. Uh, honorable members, uh, any further questions from your side? Uh, honorable Chief Patterson, why is yours? Thank you, Chairperson. Chairperson, I'm also um, with no signal, so please interrupt me if I'm not audible, but I'm not going to put my camera on for that very purpose. Um, thank you for the presentations from the PEC, um, and, and that, uh, you know, I'm glad to hear that they generally seem to be achieving their financial targets um, and, and, and their outcomes. The one question I wanted to ask was, um, Specific trainings on ethics and ethical guidelines. Um, I noted that the, the code of conduct or the ethical code of conduct for public, for, um, public servants has not been updated for many years. And what initiatives are in place to actually update that code of conduct? Um, I can't remember the last version, but I, I do think it's quite possibly maybe over 10 years ago. I can I can look into my files for that. So so what initiatives are in place to to work on that, especially in the in the environment of the recommendations of the uh, the, the Zondo Commission report? And then also executive on ethical training um, for public representatives. I know it falls outside of the mandate of the Public Service Commission, but given the fact that public servants work in, to, in, in hand with public representatives, what sort of um, initiatives is, is PEC, if they are considering in that field, um, and specifically, not just handing out a code of conduct, but actually doing training, workshops, seminars, um, to to basically assist public servants and public representatives with with some sort of an insulation. And this and this uh, carries on from uh, Honorable Chai's question from the pressures that are placed on public servants and also public representatives by by their political superiors or their political higher ups. To, to try and induce people or influence people to act in, a, in, in unethical ways. 
Chairperson, I just believe this is extremely important as I think it really lies sometimes at the heart of where we have gone wrong as a country in terms of um, corruption is, is not only in the rules. You know, you can have too many rules that enforce ethics, but if there isn't actually a, a change of heart or a change of mind of the persons involved in the, in, in, in the environment, in the ecosystem, the act and the stakeholders involved. If there's no change of mind there, then sometimes you could possibly be wasting your time. So, and, and then the final question is, is, what is the perception of the PSC of, well, let, let me rephrase this. According to the PEC and their work they do, what is the perceptions of public servants towards the PSC? And how do those perceptions reflect in or influence the behavior of public servants in the discharge of their duties? Have they done any studies in that regard, any research, any semi-structured to try and gauge how public servants see the PEC and their role and how that can influence their behavior? Has there been anything like that? Um, and if there hasn't, I just really want to suggest that research like that is done. And, um, if there has been research, well, what has been the outcome of that research? Thank you, Chairman. It's, it's a global and ethical. I just want to get some input from the from the colleagues on that. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, thank you, Honorable uh, Professor, uh, Honorable Dango. Yes. Yeah, thank you very much, Chairperson. Chairperson, uh, and thank you for the presentation and the presenters. My question is the following. It's the question of uh, performance agreements, how they are structured. If they are structured, in fact, to obtain the national objectives, or in fact, if they are structured so that the person that is actually filling out the performance agreements can achieve uh, the minimalist objectives uh, without being uh, penalized for that. I've seen situations where um, public servants fill in when they're in the performance agreement, the minimalist position, so they actually can achieve 100% performance, but that is not achieving the objectives of the state it is not uh, achieving the objectives of the department they're in or the ministry that they're in. Of course, the minister is responsible for outcomes. The DGs are responsible for outputs. And when we're measuring outputs, we're not actually looking at outcomes. Because if we're not getting outcomes, a minimalist position is not going to advance um, our objectives as a state, as a country, uh, in any department. Uh, we need to actually ask the PSC to do training and look at the objectives when people are entering into performance agreements, right from the, the minister with the presidency when they <clears throat> when they present their budget, that's a contract. And the DG with the minister, and then the DG down to the, 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 the employee that is sitting at the lowest rung, are we actually uh, uh, designing the performance agreements to, to obtain objectives or are we doing so to do compliance? Thank you very much. Thank you, Honorable Dango, Honorable uh, Apleni. Thank you very much, Chair. You will pardon me for the camera. Uh, the network is very poor. Um, now, Chair, I will be very short. Uh, you know, there is a, we have a, a serious problem in this country of uh, people who were deployed or employed in governance uh, because they were belonging to a certain uh, particular political party. Uh, in some cases, you would find that uh, uh, some of those people do not qualify 
to do their jobs and it becomes even a very hard to train them uh, to be able to perform well. Now, the question that I have uh, is whether as the um, PSC conducted an assessment of finding out uh, within the public service, whether do we still have a huge or large number of such people? And if there is any assessment that has been done in that regard, uh, is there a way of uh, making sure that uh, some of those people are being removed in those positions. I'm trying to be careful, Chair, not to say that they should be removed. Uh, and, 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 uh, and right people are being placed uh, so that uh, the work of the government can continue as it should. Uh, that is the only question uh, I have, Chair. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Aplain. You are putting the chairperson in a very awkward situation. <laughs> uh, that's the truth from my side, Chair, Honorable Chair. Mm -hmm. the... Sorry, Chairperson. I just wanted to all into the specific document. Um, you, you're not, you're not the to document you. I was referring to, uh, Peter Chairperson, at all. Chairperson, can you hear me now? Yes, 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 yes. Yes, can you repeat? Uh, uh, what you okay. The, the, it's called the Explain Manual of the Public Service. And it's, a, it's called a practical guide to ethical dilemmas in the workplace. And what I have is that it was lost in 2002. That was the document I was referring to earlier. And so the question to the PSC is, has, has there been any update on that document since uh, 20 years ago? Thanks a lot. Yeah. Can, you, can, you, can, you, can you repeat that? Can indeed, Chairperson. It, it's the explanatory manual on the code of conduct for the public service. And the title is A Practical Guide to Ethical Dilemmas in the Workplace. It was brought out by the Public Service Commission in 2002. That was the first edition. Um, I just wanted to, so as part of my question earlier about ethics, has that document been reproduced, um, altered, amended in any way to, to cater for? where we are as a country right now. Thank you. Thank you, thank, thank, thank you too. Uh, other Hello, one? Yeah, no, thanks uh, <laughs> for the opportunity. And uh, no, the one thing I wanted to check uh, to, um, um, uh, with the commission is to, given that uh, the, the, the act that they operate uh, from is uh, a 1997 act, uh, whether they have uh, had a look at this act and, and perhaps uh, see whether there could be some changes because, uh, I mean, it's uh, 1997, uh, there has been some development also around the issues of uh, good governance challenges, uh, uh, but they operating based on that 1997. I just wanted to check if uh, they had uh, perhaps a look and see whether there should be a review uh, with the intention to make amendments, uh, particularly also uh, adding the, perhaps the, the provision uh, on, on, on remedies, uh, including uh, perhaps the uh, penalties. Uh, uh, the only area that I see in the act that got to do with the penalties when the, is on the obstruction of the work of the commissioner. Um, but other than that, there, there are no penalties uh, with regard to a failure uh, uh, by those in the public service uh, to adhere uh, to the constitutional principles. Um, the last issue is with the uh, evaluation of the HODs. I just wanted to check if uh, in their 
in the process of uh, evaluating the end HODs, did they find that there are HODs uh, who were not supposed to be in the position they currently are uh, occupying? Uh, thank you, Chair. Thank you, thank you, uh, Just a uh, uh, few from my side, Chair Pazirigeni, the you did uh, earlier on when you started uh, allude to the, the framework on, uh, on the professionalization of uh, public service, uh, which has been uh, approved by the by the uh, a cabinet. Uh, it will be important just to to, to get a sense uh, in terms of. Uh, the, the, what is the thrust of, 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 the, of the policy document, even if you can share it with us. Uh, I think uh, this, this will also help us in terms of uh, understanding the, the interface uh, that we have with the, the National School of Governance, uh, particularly the nature of the relationship and, uh, and the extent to which uh, they play a positive role in terms of uh, uh, intervening at, at, at the level of the professionalization of the public service. Uh, <clears throat> the, the second one relates to the uh, for, 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 from the team from the from the chairperson assessment. Uh, the situation at provincial at, at, at provincial level, uh, the work that uh, uh, our commissioners are doing. Uh, is there any uh, challenge that uh, that you would need uh, intervention from from the uh, national uh, uh, PSC level? Uh, I'm raising this point informed by the, the challenges that we have with the Bumalanga, which ultimately led to your uh, having uh, uh, interaction with the speaker. Uh, the impact of 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 of, 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 of such vacancies. Really at the, the, the leadership level. Uh, the, the, the last one relates to, to the issue of compliance in terms of regulation 2222 of the public uh, service, uh, <clears throat> uh, particularly uh, given its uh, emphasis on the, on, on, on the uh, uh, obligation on the part of the head of the department to. Uh, uh, Take charge of the ethics, uh, ethics and corruption risk. Uh, to they need to ensure that uh, there is a, a ethics management strategy in place uh, to confront and deter unethical conduct and acts of corruption, uh, and also an obligation to refer allegations of corruption to the relevant law enforcement agency. Uh, the question that I, want to, that I want to pose is, is the PSC able to provide an overview of the level of compliance at provincial departments level in respect of those listed uh, areas under regulation two? I think this, this is quite important because uh, <clears throat> the uh, scrutiny of financial disclosure forms uh, reveals that uh, there are still senior management uh, service members that are repeated offenders uh, uh, in terms of uh, uh, prov other provinces. Uh, so therefore it becomes important that we, uh, we, 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 we take charge uh, also of that process. Over to you, uh, uh, Chairperson of the Public Service Commission. Well, thank you very much, Honorable Chairperson and honorable members for such important questions. Some of them are also assisting in highlighting some of the priorities that we should take into account. Let me start with honorable Manda Khai. Our mandate is quite broad and as such, this mandate, honorable members, is also speaking to ensuring the effectiveness and efficiency of the public service. So honorable members, that is broad enough 
it goes to making sure that the policy advice on uh, good practice in terms of improvement of public service, the promotion of uh, constitutional values of the public service. So it is broad enough, but at the same time made to be specific in some of the areas which are there. So you were correct in raising those issues, but to be more specific, honorable members, PSC has taken an extraordinary step of organizing in partnership with the United Nations, as well as University of South Africa, a conference, anti-corruption conference in December on the 8th and the 9th. We will also extend invitation to you. At the heart of this is to say, how do we respond to the Zondo Commission reports and all other corruption-related reports, whether it is the PPE scandals or the Nugent Commission or several other commissions at the level of public service. And in that, we have invited the president of the country, we have invited the speaker of parliament, we have invited the chief justice so that all the three branches of government are able to lead in the process of such responses. We are part of the Forum of Institutions Supporting Democracy, which is your chapter nine institutions. They are part of the organizing team and they'll also be presenting, that includes your AG, your Gender Commission, your Human Rights Commission, and several other entities within that fold, the Public Protector, and so on. So we're doing some work in terms of the response to the state capture. And I do think that the approval of the framework for professionalization of public service in essence is another very important concrete practical response if well implemented, which will go a long way in making sure that issues of corruption are limited and service delivery becomes more effective through the creation of a single public administration and ending the kind of fragmentation that we have. Indeed, we have had a direct meeting with the AG led by Zagane to discuss some of the reports that the AG often have on the public service. One of the areas that we've identified is that weaknesses within the human resources, within the supply chain, are the biggest contributors to the loopholes which cause the kind of corruption that we've seen, in addition, of course, to the issue of unlawful instruction and poor management of the political administrative interface which sometimes become an interference. And uh, on the issue of accounting to the NCOP, we were always open ourselves because we said we account to parliament, whatever organ of parliament. So we're happy that the matter now has been settled with the legal advice and we look forward to working with you and providing all these reports because they assist your oversight. They will assist the work that you are doing. On the lifestyle audit, indeed, PSC is doing some work to ensure that now that it has been adopted, it's one of the things that we are going to make sure that we oversee and make sure that departments are implementing what is provided for. And we've been working closely with DPSA as they are issuing instructions and guidelines for implementation. With the whistleblowers, very specifically, we've had a meeting with the HOD of Health in Gauteng who has received threats after the suspension of the CFO there, knowing that uh, 
the other whistleblower from the same department was killed. So in our meeting with Minister Tsele and all the leaders within the police, including the commissioners, we raised this particular issue of the protection, not just of whistleblowers, but also investigators. And we are engaging them to get a concrete response, but also to advise where necessary. And uh, the other issue that uh, Honorable Tim brought to say, uh, referred to the training on ethics. Indeed, in our promotion of principles and values in the constitution, we are in discussions with the moral regeneration. We've had a meeting, we're in discussions with Father of Simangal Somkacho, who is the head of that and his team. We have started discussions. I've engaged Professor Rousseau of the Ethics Institute, and we are engaging the National School of Government. The key issue that we are raising is to say, on average, it's clear that people may know cognitively what these values and principles are. But the biggest hurdle, how do you make sure that people internalize this and these values change their attitudes so that we have a new ethos in public service? Because you'll find that people who do wrong can recite most of these principles. Some of them are even heading some of these institutes and yet they do the wrong thing. How then do we make sure that the change of behavior arise from the interventions where in discussions with the training institutions, universities, where in discussions with the National School of Government and so forth to make sure that we do find a mechanism to this effect. And we're also in discussions with the UN agencies like your UNDP to say, help us with comparative examples elsewhere where behavioral change came because people made these values intrinsic. Because this is the most serious element. And we've even said our approach is to move from just rules-based to include value-based public service. Of course, the issue of wrongful instructions and the political administrative interface, the professionalization of public service and all the details of what interventions are there is meant to ensure that this is limited or contained and regulated. So the approval of that framework goes a long way to ensure that such interference will no longer be a norm. And as such, issues of performance management, which are professionalized with experts involved, right from recruitment up to performance management and the reviewing of the framework of performance management, Honorable Dango, it's one of the key things that PSC is seized with working, of course, with DPSA, working with, uh, you know, the School of uh, uh, Government and all other relevant entities. Because one of the key things is we can't go on the same way. Performance management system needs an overhaul for greater impact so that the malicious compliance is not the indicator of success or failure. Then very quickly, I'll then ask my colleagues also to, uh, uh, you know, answer some of the areas I might have left out. There is a public service bill, public service commission bill, which is underway. We've had discussions. It is ready. It has served even before the portfolio committee. We've briefed the speaker on that. And it is meant to give more teeth and more independence to the Public Service Commission. And uh, we will be a happy chairperson in the interest of time 
to send you via email this framework of professionalization as well as the draft bill so that it speaks to the issues that you are talking to. I will now ask uh, Dr. Sidibe, our DDG, if uh, there is anything that she can add, especially on some of the updating of policies uh, regarding uh, the code of conduct for the public service. I guess, I guess your team will follow suit, uh, Professor Tijani. Um, thanks very much, uh, Professor Tijani. Uh, Mr. Malachi is also here. He will assist uh, with uh, some of the questions. Let me just address a few areas uh, that um, Professor Tijani has not alluded to. Um, starting with uh, what is the perception of public servants uh, of the PSC? Have we conducted a study uh, and, 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 uh, in that area? We have not necessarily done a study like that in a long time, uh, um, but currently the PSC is in the process um, of conducting such a study, not just looking at the perception of um, public servants, but looking at the perception of all stakeholders. But I just need to indicate that um, from our informal engagements with various stakeholders, when we do uh, different types of our work, whether it being investigations in grievances, public administration investigations, inspections, and so forth, um, public servants and members of the community who have benefited through the intervention of the PSC do appreciate the work of the PSC. Uh, equally, we do have instances where, especially public servants who may not have uh, benefited directly through the intervention of the PSC, but often they appreciate an improved understanding of the prescripts and what is expected of them uh, once the PSC has engaged with them and the various departments. But like I said, the current study that the PSC is conducting will then be able to give us an informed perspective of you know, uh, 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 whether we are positively perceived or not, or whether our existence uh, uh, is seen uh, uh, differently by different uh, uh, stakeholders. Let's go to the issue of the performance agreements and how they are structured. Um, we have done a lot of studies, uh, rapid assessments, full-scale studies, uh, workshops, and so forth in the areas of uh, performance management and development. Our findings often result in, you know, mixed results in the sense that you can find in the same institution performance agreements that are tied, that are directly linked with the strategic documents of the department, and where the strategy themselves are directly linked in a very strong manner with a medium term expenditure framework and so forth. But there would also be instances of what we would refer to as target gaming, where the, the targets that are set in some performance agreements are extremely loose and weak and not as strong as uh, 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 what the, the departmental strategies uh, uh, are saying. Uh, but having said that, this is an area that we have been engaging with the DPSA on, and we have recently had an engagement with DPSA again, and they are in the process of reviewing uh, the uh, PMDS system. And one of the biggest challenges uh, that we have found over the years, and, and DPSA has now finally understood and agreed, is that the PMDS to a greater degree was negatively influenced by the fact that it was closely tied with a remuneration or bonus scheme. And we have recommended uh, uh, for many years that the two must be delinked and uh, PSC took uh, those recommendations a year or two uh, into action and, and hence uh, the performance bonuses were gradually reduced up to they don't exist anymore because we want to go back into 
proper performance management and development uh, uh, independent of financial um, incentives. Um, the issue of whether the evaluations that the PSC has conducted has ever revealed if there are any HODs who are not supposed to be appointed. Our evaluations are not necessarily designed to test that, but let me uh, uh, indicate this. Before an HOD is appointed, the Department of Public Service and Administration has uh, oversight over the entire process before any recommendation can be submitted uh, to cabinet at the national level. In the provinces, the processes are overseen by the office of the premier. So from where we are sitting as the PSC, the HODs whose performance evaluations we have uh, conducted, we did not necessarily find anything amiss with those HODs. But there is a qualifier to the statement. Very few HODs, if we know the turnover rate of HODs in the public service, that it ranges between 2.9 years to 3.2 years in the public service on average. There is a very small number of HODs who were able to serve their five-year term and some of them to actually even have the five-year term renewed once or twice and so forth. And, and these are the types of HODs that often when we do performance evaluations, they are the, the, the HODs that we would be evaluating. Uh, I think their work speaks for, for, for itself. Some of them have moved from different portfolios to others to make an impact. So it's very difficult when you have a very small number of HODs whose lifespan in the public service is strong enough that they actually even reach a performance assessment period. I think a number of the other HODs who stay for the three years, four years, as uh, the turnover rate ratios indicate, some of them don't actually even get evaluated because of irreconcilable differences between them and executive authorities. Their assessments are never conducted. Documentation is never submitted, so there is no performance evaluation. But that does not mean uh, those people are poor performers. I think the notion of irreconcilable differences sometimes is linked up with issues of ethics, conduct, and uh, you know the types of leadership between an HOD and an EA. And, and some of them could easily be linked up with instances that we have witnessed around life as it many, the state capture, and, 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 and a number of those uh, uh, unacceptable uh, uh, excuses or practices uh, that are identified. Uh, the last point uh, that I just want to comment on very quickly before I ask Mr. Malachi to come in relates to training on ethics. Um, Mr. Malachi will talk to the Code of Conduct because they've been doing some work there. The National School of Government, uh, PSC for a start, does not have a mandate to conduct training. We do not have the capacity to, to conduct training because uh, this is a fairly specialized area. If you have to develop curriculum that has to meet particular standards, we don't have that capacity. But the National School of Government does have the capacity. And in fact, they do have a training course on uh, ethics in the public service. And in 2020, 2021, even 2021, 2022, the course was made available free of charge to public servants. And uh, there was a, a lot of uptake from a lot of public servants. Uh, from our engagement with the NSG, and we have seen them when we request them to develop particular training programs, they do have the capacity to tailor make their programs for other sectors and spheres. So uh, uh, when, if there is a need for, for training for public representatives, including local government, uh, I am of the opinion, if I can speak for the NSG, that they have the capacity to tailor make such and uh, currently they are able to run training programs for large numbers of people at a time. I think um, I will stop at that and request them that Emalaji. Uh, oh, sorry, if, if I can address the issue of visiting schools and whether our mandate uh, includes uh, looking at service delivery within the schools, issues of textbooks and infrastructure. 
when we do inspections in schools, uh, these are some of the issues that we have looked at. We've, we've done quite a bit of work around inspections, looking at the availability of textbooks and other learner support teacher materials, including looking at basic issues of infrastructure. And in some instances, then the PSC is also able to engage the relevant departments that have the responsibility to play a part. If it is infrastructure, we are also looking at departments responsible for infrastructure, public works, and the related. Whereas when it comes to a learner teacher support materials and the basics that are needed by teachers, those recommendations are sent to the Department of Education. Why we may not be seen to be having the impact that is desired across all the areas, the PSC is a very small institution. Uh, some of the methodologies that we employ, whether it be service delivery inspections or citizens forum, they can be used by different departments uh, to troubleshoot in the same manner that the PSC does. So what we normally do is a deep stick and where we find problems, we report they are dealt with and the expectation is the departments should use our findings, not just to address the problems, in the schools that we have only identified, but also to look at all other schools that might be in a similar a predicament. And repeatedly, we do try to follow up on the implementation of uh, our recommendations with the Department of Education and other affected departments. Some recommendations are implemented quickly. Some take a very long time, especially those relating to infrastructure. Uh, let me request in Malaji. thank you. Uh, good morning, Honorable Chair and members of your committee, uh, Chairperson of the PSC, uh, Prof. Ikeni. I'm going to take uh, uh, some of the questions that were posed to us. Uh, allow me to switch off the camera. I just did it so that you can see who is talking to you at this point in time. Um, the question you posed regarding the extent of compliance with the, the requirements, the regulation one of 2016, which is contained in regulations 22 and 23 um, regarding ethics infrastructure and um, conducting ethics and corruption uh, uh, risks assessments. Uh, we have conducted a study that spent over a period of three years. We completed it in the, the preceding financial year, 2021-2022. Uh, uh, so that report is available. But at a high level, I can share that most provincial departments, the study uh, uh, took into account both national and provincial departments, all of them. Uh, to what extent the leadership commitment uh, to integrity and establishing ethics infrastructure. Most provincial departments do not have a dedicated ethics unit. What they do, they allocate, they assign duties as ad hoc to employees who already have their day-to-day -day duties like in HR, in, um, in auditing, internal audit, then they give them ethics function. Uh, we have made a, a proposal to DPSA also to, to issue an advisory to department to establish ethics units so that the ethics function is no longer just a compliance uh, uh, exercise, but to make sure that ethics is internalized in all the departments. Um, the report uh, can be made available to yourselves and, and the honorable committee members. I'll move on to the next one. The, the training, uh, Dr. Sidibe has, has captured that uh, um, sufficiently. I will just want to, to remark on the, the perception of the public employees towards the PSC. 
There is a study that was done by the Ethics Institute of Southern Africa, which is led by Professor Dion Rousseau. That study found that employees of government uh, still have confidence in the, in the PSC. And what they were assessing there is whether they will refer uh, complaints or allegations of corruption to PSC. So that rating was, was very high. And that report is also available if, if, um, if you, 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 you will need it just for your information and, and records. Um, on the, Professor Fikin has, has, has um, covered one area where we, we plan ethics uh, um, and coordinate those events that are happening nationally, focusing not only in the public service, but also uh, civil society participation, academia, as well as the as well as the the, the business and labor, um, where we we interrogate issues of ethics, and the one such he rightfully said is in December. Uh, we already had another one in April, which reflected on. Um, the revelations by the state capture, failure of governance, what is the way forward that we need to come up with. Um, and and that, that seminar was, was a very well attended. Uh, it did not only uh, articulate what were the problems, but there were concrete proposals of what needed to happen beyond the, the, the State Capture Commission's uh, report. What form of implementation uh, should all of us, including law enforcement, all the agencies that, that uh, support democracy, what roles must we play as we, we to make sure that the, the State Capture does not recur? Um, with regard to the explanatory manual, uh, on ethical dilemmas in the public service. There is a, a recent uh, uh, manual that has been reviewed and that was done uh, to take into account the issue of unlawful instructions. Um, uh, Prof. Kenny spoke about the political administrative interface where we found that there, there is a more often than not, the problems arise at that at that level. We 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 then reviewed that manual on handling of ethical dilemmas in the workplace, and uh, the, the latest version is uh, the one of March 2022, and um, it 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 no longer reads as it was, but it reads unlawful instructions and handling of ethical dilemmas in the workplace. And this is the, the manual we engage with all departments. And the latest engagement was on the 13th of September, 2022, where all heads of HR, all ethics officers were invited to come and engage with us on their pertinent roles in departments. Um, and that was also very well attended. Um, let me check one issue that I may have left. Uh, the issue of lifestyle audits. What role do we play as the Public Service Commission? Um, the project of lifestyle audit is led by the DPSA. Our contribution is in so far as the the, the provision of uh, what senior managers would have disclosed to us, what we would have scrutinized, and uh, those uh, flagged uh, suspicious transactions or, or, or disclosures. Uh, then we share them with 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 uh, the the heads of departments because the the function is entrusted in the heads of all departments. So we provide support to them as and when they have an issue or issues they are dealing with regarding uh, lifestyle of, of identified uh, managers. 
uh, but also it it we 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 scrutinize um, all the disclosures of people who are in the all the employees of of finance supply chain those who are dealing with tenders and uh, are designated officials um i will move on do we do investigations on procurement uh, uh, irregularities yes we do um for instance there is a, a huge case we are dealing with in the eastern cape which is centering around procurement irregularities, scholar transport, um, massive uh, uh, um, amounts uh, spent there. We are going to make sure that uh, justice is served regarding that matter. Collaboration with uh, Auditor General. We have an MOU with AGSA. Um, once they have found irregularities relating to finances. Ours is to monitor uh, implementation of disciplinary uh, um, cases and, and finalization thereof, so that there is consequence management on these matters that are, are, are discovered. Um, and we, we issue a report yearly, and that report uh, can be shared with you and be presented to you all the details that reflect in that report. Uh, the other impact that I'll just need to share with the members of the esteemed committee, we conduct investigations as the Public Service Commission on appointment irregularities as well as procurement irregularities. Now, at the conclusion thereof, once there is substance on the, on the matter under investigation, we recommend certain actions. One of them is disciplinary action. Well, um, then the other is um, cancellation of contract, cancellation of appointments uh, through a court process, because you don't just cancel it like that once you have entered into it. You do it through a so, the, the, there is or there are areas where impact can be can be seen um, is just that the the sketch of corruption has gone way too deep. Uh, we have a mammoth task to uproot all of it. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Chair. Oh, thank you. Uh... Uh, less than I see, Honorable Khai's hand is up. Honorable uh, Khai and Honorable Chin, I guess that's follow up. Honorable uh, 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 Khai? No, thank you very much, uh, Chair. Again, um, I, I just wanted to, to find out uh, with regard to the anti corruption hotline. Uh, I'm reminded of a situation where we had a, a plenary session in the NCOP. Uh, it was uh, questions to the executive, the uh, minister uh, responsible for evaluation and monitoring. Uh, the question related to the presidential hotline. Recording in progress. Uh, I'm not sure because some of the challenges, uh, especially with regard to challenges of uh, good governance, you find them in the state-owned entities as well as the the local government. Um, um, I was just thinking, we're checking whether the the application because uh, it is now limited at national departments and provincial departments whether the scope has been widened uh, to cover the state-owned entities as well as uh, uh, the local government. 
or is it a matter that first should be addressed uh, in the constitution? Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Honorable Chair. Thank you, Honorable Chair. Thank you, Honorable Chair. Thank you to the presenter. I'm sorry, I didn't catch the name who spoke to the study um, of perceptions towards the PEC and also the updated um, handbook um, relating to unlawful instructions and ethical committee get both of those, both that study and that updated handbook, or can we be it's a bit, uh, it's a bit difficult to, to uh, get your message on the team, but I think the commitment from the, from the, uh, from the Sorry, team. Person. That, yes, Tim, you can repeat uh, what you were saying. Okay, if you can hear me now, Chairperson, it was just to ask um, that the PEC provide us with that study relating to the perceptions of the PEC and the updated 2022 version of that uh, handbook relating to unlawful instructions and ethical dilemmas. Thank you. Well, thanks, thanks. Uh, so, I remember, I let me then again uh, give over to, to Prof. Uh, just in terms of follow-ups. Thank you very much. I'll make it very quick. The first one uh, to Honorable Tim, we will send all the documents we have noted and ask our office to email them to the members, uh, especially the updated versions. <clears throat> in as far as the scope of the bill itself, extending to local government. Yes, the bill does mention that, but more important, the new framework for professionalization of public service is trying to create a single administration through a series of legislations to ensure that SOEs, local government, state security and several other entities, including employees of parliament, are under a single administration so that you have standardization of rules and standardization of compliance and practices. On the issue that uh, DDGC Dibes said, we don't provide training, but we do provide workshops which are also training, but not to the accredited level where there is a short intervention needed. Then the last part I would address is the issue of qualifications. We do have a current rapid assessment of qualifications of SMS members because some of them were reported not to have qualifications. And some we further followed up with DPSA and the department concerned to say some had not updated their information Therefore, the number is expected to reduce, including those legacy ones of those who are about to now go on pension in as far as the issue of uh, qualifications or people appointed without uh, requirements. And again, the standardization of requirements for appointments and the professionalization and the review of the appointment criteria is going to eliminate the scope of people who are employed without the requisite uh, qualifications. But I'll ask DDG Malazi to speak to the issue of the anti-corruption hotline. Thank you, Prof. Uh, I, thank I you, also Prof. just want to mention that uh, I am with uh, fellow commissioner, uh, Yasmin Barkas, who is the resident commissioner uh, in KZN, who is part of this meeting following the proceedings. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Prof. Uh, I will be brief as well. 
with regard to the national anti-corruption hotline, it is monitored all the time and calls are answered. Uh, there was a time when it was being serviced, uh, during which time we, we rerouted the calls to mobile uh, devices, still which were answered. But in the evening, uh, callers are requested to record a message in a, in a recorder that is, is, is stationed here. Then we upload the recorded uh, reports in the morning, first thing when we come in. Um, that is all on the National Anti-Corruption Hotline. Um, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Chair. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Uh, I guess that uh, honorable members uh, are now uh, more clear in terms of uh, further information given through uh, responses and replies to the uh, question posed. Uh, at this uh, juncture, I must then take this opportunity on behalf of the Committee uh, on Transport, Public Service, and Administration, Public Waste and Infrastructure, uh, to express our sincere gratitude to uh, Professor Samara Rafitini and uh, his uh, fellow commissioners and the management team uh, for honoring our 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 appointment is the committee to come and give us an update in terms of the progress uh, that the public service community is making in terms of its programmatic areas. Indeed, we are leaving this meeting fully conversant in terms of uh, uh, the key areas that you are uh, 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 working on. But more than that, I think progress around the uh, Around, around your uh, uh, programs. Uh, what, what is key also is the, is, is the fact that uh, uh, you continue to, you continue with your uh, uh, good work around clean, clean audit, uh, which is a clear uh, indication that uh, uh, you are leading by example, and, 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 and therefore it must, it must uh, be uh, recorded uh, as a shiny example of what uh, entities of, 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 our state must do, uh, precisely by virtue of the fact that uh, you, owe, you owe your existence to, to chapter 10 of the Constitution of the Republic of South Africa, uh, but also uh, quite instrumental in terms of uh, uh, what uh, Section 196 of the Constitution provide, uh, uh, particularly in terms of the promotion of values and principles essential in Section 195. And we have no doubt that uh, you continue to be uh, our eyes and ears in terms of ensuring that uh, uh, you provide leadership uh, around human resource management, around handling labor relations, around, around uh, 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 ensuring that uh, where there are, uh, where there is a need for investigations uh, that is uh, followed up, but also key to your work is ensuring that uh, uh, you promote professional ethics in our public service. In a, in a, you prom, promote professional ethics in the public service. And uh, you do that through uh, a time and again, making a reflection in terms of what that we are doing. We're happy that uh, uh, at this juncture, there is, a, there is a process unfolding in terms of amending uh, uh, the legislation that gave birth to the, to the uh, PSC. And at some point we will definitely get an opportunity uh, for an update in terms of uh, uh, the thrust of that legislation. And on that note, uh, uh, Prof, uh, yourself and your team, uh, you are excused. Have a wonderful afternoon. Any last word, Prof? Thank you very much, Chairperson. Thank you very much uh, to fellow uh, members of the Select Committee on behalf of the PSC. May you have a wonderful day ahead. Thank you.
Thank you, thank you, thank you, Prof. Uh, thank you very much. Right, right. Uh, honorable members, we will then uh, move to the next item on the agenda, which is the minutes of the last meeting that we had. Uh, Enrico? Thank you, honorable members. The minutes of the meeting of, of the 19th of October, where as the state committee, we were hosting uh, uh, the Department of Transport to give us an update in terms of the white paper on national rail policy. Uh, those are the members uh, that attended the meeting and the apologies as recorded. And the, the team led, that led the Department of Transport Mr. Makapia and uh, our team uh, of parliament. Sorry, Chair, I don't know if I saw my name there. I, does, uh, there's, 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 let's just go up. You, you, were, you were. I was present, but I. Yes. I yeah, don't no, see. You are, you are, you are chair. Number, number. Oh, okay. All right. Yes, I do see. The Three from above. Okay. Yeah. All right, let's proceed, Enrico. Those are the issues that we can vast uh, from the presentations. From the presentations, uh, the thrust of uh, the policy paper, and then the comments that were made by members. Any, any correction that the honorable members are picking up? Or subtraction or addition to the minutes as presented? So we also then uh, gave an update in terms of uh, the, the bills that are coming and uh, we are waiting guidance from the management team. Can we get a move for the adoption of the minutes? I so move, Chairperson. Thank you, Honorable Dango. Can we get a second that? I second, Chair. Thank you, thank you, Honorable Khari. Uh, therefore, the minutes of the 19th of October is hereby duly adopted as a true reflection of what transpired in the last uh, meeting. Uh, and on that note, uh, can I then take this opportunity to also uh, extend the word of gratitude to all honorable members, the parliamentary, the staff from the committee secretary, the researcher, the content advisor, the media team also, the parliament you uh, too, and also the, uh, the uh, team uh, from our offices uh, for making uh, this meeting a success and uh, therefore the meeting is formally adjourned until uh, next week. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Honourable Members.